Hello all, welcome to Colony. It's been a busy one this Friday morning. We've of course got two big games coming up at Fenora City on the road. We've had two new signings unveiled today. And then of course the massive, massive, I don't use that word lightly, massive breaking news last night that Jez Moxie has left his role as Chief Executive at the football club after just six months in the job. David Freezer is with me now. Uh, where to start? I guess, um, Alec Neal, the first questions he, were, he was always going to be asked about were, were Jez Moxie. How did you feel he, he dealt with those and, and came across? Yeah, I mean, we weren't expecting him to sort of give us a huge character reference, really, and go into the depths of it. Um, it was fairly short with some of his answers on it, but basically um, said that he'd, he'd spoken to Jez since and just to you know talk over the situation. Um, didn't really want to sort of say whether he was surprised, but he, he did say that it's not necessarily a good thing that the club has had... Um, to chief executives in, in fairly short time, um, but sort of kept coming back to the point that that's not really anything to do with him. You know that, that he was told about this by the owners. You know Alex Neal has no control over what the chief executive does, does he? So he, um, you know, he was fairly calm about it already. Yeah, it was interesting. It definitely felt like he Alec has his role and he's not going to get too attached to anything. I, I asked him uh, why he felt Jez left and he said he didn't know and that was it and then sort of smiled <laughs> so fair enough we'll of course see how that one uh, plays out over the coming days and, and hours possibly uh we should also mention we had Mitchell Dykes and uh, Yannick Wilschut. I still haven't pronounced that right it's, it's very technical but uh two two Dutchmen um fair to say that they came out together t to talk to us and Yannick was there probably to help Mitchell with his English a bit uh but Yannick himself seemed like a really interesting character. Yeah, definitely. He seemed really bubbly, didn't he? He was um, clearly very happy to be here. Uh, it was quite almost sweet, really. And Mitchell kind of lost his way with his English at, at, at one point. And um, I don't know, maybe a few nerves kicked in because he was sort of sat in front of a, a room full of journalists. But um, Yannick dived in and basically made his quotes up for him. <laughs> so they, they had quite a good laugh. It was... Um, uh, I mean, last January, I remember Stephen Naismith and Tim Closer um, being unveiled at the same time. And that, that had quite a nice dynamic to it as well. You can have a bit of fun with them. So, yeah, they both seem like good lads, both big blokes as well. And uh, Mitchell Dykes has got a booming voice. He has, he has got a booming voice. He's an interesting character, though, because as you said, I think he, the, the main point at which Yannick stepped in was when um, he, uh, Mitchell was asked about, you know, whether it was a low move and why and and that kind of commitment question i suppose and alec also touched on the fact that mitchell hasn't arrived permanently because he wants to he's a family guy he, he has close ties to home and, and this is a big move uh, and a, a, away from his place of birth if you like and uh, he's doing that at quite a young age too so he's an interesting character there. I hope he has the robustness as well on a football pitch, which can be very different to dealing with the press conference. That was probably the one thing that came across most to me that he's not worried about, isn't it? When um, uh, the, I think he jokingly said, oh, yeah, the long balls, didn't he, to, to Yannick. <laughs> and um, he said the physicality is not a problem for him at all. It's almost, almost. I mean, you know, he's six foot four. He's, he's a big bloke. I don't think that's something that's going to phase him. And Alex talked about the fact that he wanted to bring power and size in. And compared to Martin Olsen and Robbie Brady, those two guys are huge. So hopefully aerially in both boxes, they can, they can play a role and they're not going to get pushed around. And, and tomorrow at Cardiff is probably a good, uh, well, it might be sort of in at the deep end really against a Neil Warnock team. But, uh, you know, if they can survive that, then they can, they can tough it out in the championship. Yeah, it will be a serious test at Cardiff, who are, who are flying at the moment to, to a degree. Um, there's certainly a lot tougher proposition now that Neil Warnock's in charge. We yeah. all know what Neil Warnock's like. The ambition thing as well with Mitchell, I, I think that's a, a glass half full or glass half empty sort of thing. I mean, if you, on social media, you, you get some people who are saying, oh, well, why, is not, why doesn't he want to commit to the club? But you can look at it on the other side of the coin, can't you? And, and that he wants to play Premier League football or he wants to play top flight football in Europe. So why would he commit to a team who aren't there? I think if things go well here and Norwich get promoted, then there's going to be an incredible amount of momentum around the club if that happens anyway. And I would have thought he'll stay. But at this point in time, I can understand him not committing. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing him play. I think it's going to be a, a very intriguing one, um, most definitely. So yeah, Cardiff is going to be a, a tough old um, tough old venture for Norwich. And they have got two big away games. 900 fans going to Cardiff Long on trip. Saturday. Bless them. There are uh, even a few fans... Uh, Stevenage last night for the Youth Cup game who travelled down from Norfolk so that, that's the commitment I was going to say for a 2-0 defeat that, that was yeah. <laughs> quite a tough one to take uh, I, we're going to learn far more, more about whether Norwich have any kind of um, uh, 
have actually turned this corner yeah. their home form is doing it on the road it's been a disaster recently yeah it has Alex said that he thought the nil-nil at Brentford was a bit of a turning point for them um, and that they should have won it comfortably which they probably should have um, on the night and that would have really kicked things into gear on New Year's Eve and, and since uh, obviously the Southampton Cup games are slightly complicating but if they can go and win tomorrow, then the season takes on a whole new complexion. And we were just talking about it, about it before we started filming, weren't we? That four points is going to be a great return. Six points, then it almost would revolutionise the, the, the season. It, particularly if these two new guys can make a big impact. Um, I mean, from what I've seen of Yannick Wilshire in... in oh, I'm not pronouncing that right, am I? We, need, <laughs> fine, we have fine. to get Stuart Hodge back in yeah, here. Yeah. Is it Will Schott? Yes. <laughs> he got it. He did it very well. Um, I didn't, um, but he looks a bit like Darren Huckaby almost. And and I mean, it's been a while since Norwich have had a player like that. So oh, going for the big guns, Dave. Oh, big wow. guns. Uh, one, uh, well, the main bit of uh, injury news for me was that uh, Stephen Naismith, he has a hamstring strain and might not feature on Saturday, which would be a big blow because I think he's played a real leading role in in Norwich's uh, improvement recently so that would be a blow Matt Jarvis we might see in the under 23 soon yeah um, I, I was thinking that Wes may have got dropped for this game um, in, in something that Alex had said recently about the fact um, in two years ago in the promotion push he didn't play Wes very often in the away games so I thought this may well be the game bring Wiltshire in on the left um, play Naismith in the 10 role have Wes on the bench but if Naismith isn't fit then you've got Wes so it's not exactly um, a terrible situation um, Yusuf Malumbu back as well they said they're going to assess him in training today so um, options are improving it was interesting you, you'd asked him about playing two up front with um, Cameron Jerome and of course and, and Nelson Oliveira and he seemed quite open to that idea and going up against Neil Warnock who will always play 4-4-2 <laughs> uh, we'll see they played at Brentford didn't they Cat, Jerome and Oliveira started and it didn't look that good really did no it, it didn't work no it didn't work and that was with three at the back so I don't think they'll be doing that this weekend yeah. but we'll see okay well uh, don't forget we'll have all the usual coverage pre post match at pinkin.com continuing fallout of course from Jez Moxie's departure as well and we will see you at Cardiff